community, let's talk, let's start with what community is not, because I have very much a love hate relationship with this term community. Uh, it is completely overused in the crypto space. 99.99% of people do not actually know what it means. Uh, they confuse it specifically with two other things that it is not. Um, I had a call with a venture capital firm that was an investor in the last project that I was involved in in, in Web3. And I realized through this call that here's this guy who's been doing crypto for a long time. He's successful, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, here's how we grow community, blah, blah, blah. And I realized that he was using the term community interchangeably with the term social media followers. They are not the same thing, okay? Social media followers, I am not against by any means. Come back to the perceived value. As a marketer, I absolutely understand that there's a ton of value in somebody seeing the social uh, proof in a lot of other people, especially real followers, following another person, following another project. That has value, but it is not community, okay? Um, the second thing that community gets confused with, that it is also not, and this was so cringe. I remember when I saw this tweet and I... Uh, I sent it to a bunch of people because I'm like, oh, God, this is just so, um, it was so um, tone deaf and so off that it was just cringe. Now, I can't remember if it was Voyager or Celsius. But as you know, these are two exchanges. They both froze withdrawals not that long ago and completely screwed over their customers. And the CEO, I forget again which one it was, but he basically came out and said, yeah, you know, we got to do this, but thank God, you know, we have such a loving, supportive community that we're going to get through this together. And then the comment section is all people, you know, asking for their money back. You've completely screwed over your customers. They've entrusted you with their money and you mismanaged their money and you froze it. You froze their money. A lot of people lost a lot of money through that. And that is not community what you have, like neither Voyager nor Celsius had a great community going. The, what they were confusing the word with was customers. And so if you read those comments, you see all these people asking for their money back. And he's saying we have a very supportive community who like understands the this difficult time that we have to go through. There's a complete mismatch between what he is the picture that he's painting of the community and the actual people. And so there was really no bond between the customers and those exchanges. It was just, they offer a service. They were using the service. There was nothing else there. Okay. It was not a strong supportive community. Absolutely not. Okay. So community is not social media followers and community is not customers. But community is, and I like to think, again, in practical examples that I think we can all relate to, if you've ever been on a motorcycle, when two bikers pass each other on the road, they wave to each other. Bikers have a, you know, they have biker bars. Bikers have jackets that show I'm a biker. And they've got even, you know, a little gangs or even just, you know, non-criminal sort of little sub-communities. And they're signaling to others um, that they're part of this group and whatnot. But that is not what it's built on. Those are some of the components of a community. But they are also quite surface level. The thing that a community is built on, that if you mess all the things that I just mentioned, if you mess all those up but you get this other thing right, you will have a chance of building a very strong, successful community. And if you do all the things right of the examples that I just spoke on, as far as like maybe you have like a biker bar, maybe you have like swag, but you miss this one component, this one ingredient, then chances of you building a strong community, an actually strong community, are basically non-existent. And so what communities are actually built on are archetypes or... Uh, co a, a core desire. It's an identity. They're built around a same, a group of people that are gathering, to, uh, gathering together in some way, shape, or form, and they are all on the same journey. 
And what that typically means is we have to go back to the 1950s and look at Carl Jung's work on archetypes. So archetypes, he came up with these four different variables. And through that, he was sort of like, I think he had sort of a spectrum for each variable and for all the psychoanalysis that he did for each person, he could sort of place them like, okay, you are here, blah, blah, blah. In any case, they extrapolated 11 different archetypes from the work that he did on, on, uh, on this topic. And here's the thing. Each archetype basically has one core desire. They have this one thing where every decision that they make in life, which they are usually fully unaware of, it's all subconscious at this point because they've been wanting it for so long, but they basically optimize everything. Every decision that they make, they optimize for this one thing. And if you can figure out, and I'll give you a list here very shortly, um, if you can figure out the one that makes the most sense for you, <clears throat> you can really start to build on that. And you're going to find that when you bring two people in a room together that are on the same journey, they are going to have this bond that, like I said, if you get all those other things right, they just won't have that bond. They, they'll, they'll have other surface level things in common, but I'm sure that you can remember meeting a person in your life who go, holy crap, this guy or this girl, whether it's a friend or a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, are completely like, they want the exact same things in life that I want. Anyway, let's go through the list. I think you get the concept, right? So... I'm going to give you some movie examples for each one so that you can really, it'll help drive the point home for each one. So, and don't get too caught up in what I'm calling these because I've pulled this list from the internet. I don't know if this is what, you know, Carl Jung called it. Uh, but the innocent is the first one. And what the innocent crave above all, all else is happiness. And the movie that comes to mind is The Beach. So this is Leo DiCaprio who travels to Thailand. He gets in all kinds of weird situations. He takes on a lot of risk. Uh, I have this memory of him sort of jumping off a cliff, like very high risk stuff. He just wants to be happy. That's what he's optimizing for. And he's willing to make those other things secondary, like risk and so on and so forth. So if happiness, and this comes back to Coca-Cola, right? If that, is what you're, if that is what your community is about, then you should be thinking about the language that you're using, the experiences that you're putting together, the messaging that you're using, the... Uh, uh, the graphics that you're doing, the content that you're making, you see where I'm going? It all comes back to reinforcing this one central idea, the one core desire. The second one is the orphan. The orphan wants more than anything else, uh, just security and belonging. And the movie that comes to mind is super bad. You remember how Jonah Hill and his buddy, I can't remember his name, uh, they just wanted to be part of the, like, they just wanted to be part of the, the group. Like, just want to be part of the, the, the high school cool kids club, basically. You know, they wanted to be part of the parties. They wanted to get laid. Like, they just wanted to be part of it. And they were just so outside that group. And they just, you know, that's what the whole movie was about. Like, they're transitioning through this process of, uh, of trying to be part of it. Security is slightly different, I would say. Um, I think a lot of women probably optimize for, for security. My wife's a good example. Every, every decision that she makes around life is about us having the awesome house that we live in, having you know, the health of you know, our kids and myself. Like that, That's all she cares about. So she's going to optimize completely for that. Okay? The hero... Uh, the hero wants to basically prove their worth. They're driven by status, validation, legacy, celebrity, and recognition. Uh, Rocky Balboa and Troy are ones that come to mind. Uh, remember when Troy, so uh, Brad Pitt, he kind of, uh, they're, they're uh, attacking. I can't remember what it was they were attacking, but they get to this beach and he's like way before everybody else, right? His boat is the first one to land. It's not safe at all. Also incredibly risky. He could have held back, but he's like, I want people to remember my name. That's what he was optimizing for. So why else would you do something like that if you weren't optimizing for something like that? Why would you storm the beach like way before the rest of your support is coming if you weren't trying to do things that were so crazy that um, people would remember your name? And I understand that it's you know fiction, but this is very real. Yeah, so, so Troy was all about legacy. Rocky, probably more about recognition. Um, a lot of... You can think of a lot of people yourself that are either influencers or just people that you know that take a lot of selfies and they're always posting things where you can just tell that they're posting it in a way where they're trying to get people to envy them. Um, this, is, this is that person. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. 
it's just maybe sometimes it comes from the wrong place where maybe it's like you know childhood neglect and now they're trying to make up for it by getting recognition from other people but it's not inherently wrong right so you can very much be about these things without that being a bad thing